Hi everybody, welcome to OS Kong Driving and today we are taking a look at the Peroda My V, the hottest selling hatch and hottest selling car in Malaysian history I think uh, with so many sold. Okay, right now what we are looking at is the top of the range of five variants. This is the My V Advance and uh, actually there are, all, there are five variants available three of which are from the 1.3 liter category uh, which includes one manual and two automatics at uh, 41,800 ringgit for the manual 1.3 then there is a 1.3 G auto at 43,600 and a 1.3 premium X which is selling for 45,000 plus and then there are two versions of the 1.5 liter and they are both automatics one is the high spec which is the 1.5 high is sold for 48,800 something and of course this is the top of the range this it's the myv advance automatic at 52,186 now the price comes with five years warranty or 150,000 kilometers whichever comes first the myv advance comes with a four cylinder 1.5 liter engine that develops 102 horsepower and 136 newton meters of torque now looking at the engine uh, there are some common features between this engine and the 1.5 litre engines that are powering the Toyota series uh, such as the Avanza and the Rush and also the Vios and Yaris. Okay, the horsepower figures are slightly different, uh, in fact a bit lower than the Toyota counterpart. I think it's because of the tuning. Uh, I was told that this engine is tuned for fuel efficiency. And so you can see that it fits very nicely into the engine compartment with lots of space to do work. And uh, exhaust is in the front. And if you look at the sides, you can see that this is an aluminum engine, right? And uh, the gearbox is on this side and it's a four speed automatic gearbox so this is the abs pump so we know that this car has got abs and there's a large servo for the brakes and looking at this side you can see that it's a drive by wire system over there you can see that's the throttle and the only connection to the pedal that you're stepping on are those wires there yeah that's the there is no direct connection between the accelerator and the throttle control over here. Okay, battery is a very standard small size battery but good enough for this size of car. And where is the intake? Yeah. Okay, in case you are thinking of whether the car can go through flood. Okay, this is where the intake hole for the engine is. This is where air goes into the air cleaner system and then it's filtered through here and it goes into the engine. That's the throttle body over there. So looking at it from here, you can see the air intake is right at the top of the engine. And from where I stand, you can actually have water coming up to here and still be okay. As long as water does not go in through this, this little hole here, this intake here. Yeah. So that means this car should be quite good in a flash flood. Of course, provided the water doesn't go into your, into your passenger compartment. Now. But anyway, uh, just so you know, the intake is quite high up. So that's a plus point, especially for cars running in Malaysia, especially in Kuala Lumpur. And now uh, in PJ, where there are flash floods every time it rains. Okay, tires are 15 inch, 185-55 R15. Uh, they, these tires are from Goodyear. And uh, looking further inside, you see the ventilated disc 
for the front brakes and uh, suspension is McPherson struck for the front okay moving to the back the tires are the same size and the rear brakes are drums and the suspension is a torsion beam with coil springs this is quite a simple setup and it's uh, quite common amongst cars of this size okay, looking from the back you can see that it's a hatch and there's a shark fin antenna a little mini spoiler at the back it not only makes the car look better but uh, this little part here actually helps to shield the back passenger from the sun okay especially around noon so having the little bit of extra shade helps okay lights are led for the back and you can see here this is the my v av meaning advanced and there is actually a lever to open the rear boot which is good and the black dot that you see is the reverse camera all right and let's look at the boot inside yeah just use the remote to open okay boot lid is mechanical light enough you don't need power for this and looking at the back you can see the top tether for the child seat and you can also see that the seat is reclinable a bit it's re you can see this one this is a uh, non recline this is reclined so there's a bit of allowance for you to recline the rear seats and uh, good there is a uh, there is also a rear boot light which is very good for you uh, for looking for things in the night and wow this is the spare tire and the good news is it's a full-sized spare tire usually for cars of this size they have space saver but thanks Broda, you did very well to give a full-sized alloy rim as a spare and of course there's a safety triangle and the tools the jack and tools are at the bottom okay so that's it for the boot entry into the myvi is quite simple you can either use the key fob like all other cars or you can just uh, put your finger here press and the door opens okay just a point to note when you press it like this only the driver's door open yeah the other doors do not so you have to unlock it or press your key fob twice to get it open okay so looking from the outside you can see that the driver's seat is adjustable for height uh, although i must say it doesn't adjust a lot but it can adjust and then you can also adjust the rake and that is the that is the mechanical adjustment for four and a half movement okay this is the cockpit looks simple enough and uh, looking at the side this is just a this plastic ordinary plastic and a little bit of fabric here and yeah it's quite simple construction uh, nothing spectacular but uh, looking further in you can see that you have a electrically adjustable mirror with folding mirror manual yeah folding mirror then you have some safety feature here uh, this is the VSC which is vehicle stability control and uh, this one is a special one which is the forward uh, collision yeah it's autonomous uh, braking <clears throat> so up to 30 kilometers per hour the car will detect if you are about to hit another vehicle and it will automatically apply the brakes but this is the version 1 and only works up to 30 kilometers per hour the later versions work up to 100 this is the idle stop button which turns off your engine when you're at a traffic light with your foot on the brakes okay so that's the cockpit and the seats are quite nice 
For this version, it's leather. Uh, they are made to fit various sizes of people, but there's enough support at the sides, and to me, they are okay lah, with some red and white stitching. So this is the premiumness of it. Okay, so you can see here, these are the side airbags. And whilst we're on the subject, of course, there are the two airbags for driver and passenger. And then up there, you can see those are the curtain airbags, so there are two. And together with the side airbags, which you see here on the front driver and passenger seat, that makes it six airbags in total. Not bad for a 51,000 plus car. Okay, let's get into the car. Yeah, I step on the brake. The light for the engine start stop comes on. You just press the button. And the my V starts up. Okay, so you can see the gear position. It shows P. That means you are uh, in park. And when you put the car into gear, it will show you what gear you're in. So the ref counter on the left and the speedometer on the right. Now we have tested the car. We have hit around 180. Yeah. And uh, the red line for ref counter is about 6,200 RPM. And that's for the safety. You're not supposed to ref above that. Yeah. Okay. A word on the safety equipment whilst we are here. This car is the top of the range. So it has on top of the ABS and EBD and all those things that are taken for granted now this, this car also features ASA which is the advanced safety assist things and uh, basically it has the autonomous emergency braking up to 30 kilometers per hour uh, and also it has a pedal miss operation control which means if you are facing a wall and you mistakenly put your car into forward gear and you step on the accelerator nothing will happen because the car sensors from the top here at the top here there's a sensor it senses the wall in front of you and it says you shouldn't be doing this so it refuses to move okay i asked whether i could test it and they said no you better don't it's like airbag you don't test airbag you know it's there <laughs> so but anyway, I wouldn't want to do a test like that and just in case it doesn't work, yeah? Because uh, you can have bird shit, like my friend Con says, a bird shit covering the little sensor in the front and you, that might cause it to give wrong readings. It also has a front vehicle depart system, also based on these sensors up here. So if you're stuck in a traffic jam, you fall asleep, or you're daydreaming or playing with your phone, the car in front moves and after it has moved for 10 meters away from you there will be a beep that tells you hey the car in front has moved kept me on my toes uh, and yesterday I was driving in traffic it beeped twice that means I wasn't paying attention maybe because I was looking at the car uh, at the interior of the car so in terms of the instrument panel uh, and the dashboard it looks pretty nice uh, not, not really not expensive material this hard plastic and all that a nice bit of chrome and then you have this little screen here which is good and uh, I think it's not so much about the quality because at this price well it is an entry-level car and people are not too fussy of course if you try to sell this car at 80 or 90 thousand then people will start making some noise lah. but I think insofar as this is this car is concerned is I'm pretty okay with it okay so you have a screen and we'll come back to that later then you have a single zone aircon control uh, looks digital but it's pretty straightforward and this is good you can have memory memory one you set whatever settings that you like and you press memory one to set it and somebody has set this for me this is for memory two so this is good when you get into the car uh, instead of having to play with the fans and all you just put a memory two it, it goes higher speed you know, to cool the car down then later when it's cool you just press memory one and it goes down to normal okay so that's a pretty neat feature now on the steering itself you get a steering control uh, for your volume for your radio and also for your phone okay and let's look at the 
screen okay that's the radio and it's on my favorite channel and let's move up if you move up you can see these are the various functions you can have connection usb to your to your infotainment and you can connect also a smart link or your phone you can put in an sd card and there's bluetooth yeah so you can also turn off the screen if you don't want the screen on and that's it the claim consumption on this car is 20 kilometers per liter now we have done an average of 10.9 that includes sitting here and talking with the engine idling yeah and also a lot of hard driving but uh, if you're driving around like a normal person uh, this would be a very good number to have and but i think normal people should get around 13 to 14 kilometers per liter because you're running with aircon on and then there's traffic and all that would be about the average you should get okay so we're back there and that's all the information and uh, of course the steering wheel is a nice size uh, it's about uh, it's about 13 and a half 14 inches the is still wrapped uh, not very nice looking wrapping but it's okay it's not a deal breaker yeah okay first off I think the doors open quite wide so getting in and out is good it looks like there's a lot of space between the rear seat and the front and we're gonna sit inside okay i got into the car we close the door as usual they have a hole under the seat for you to put your shoes in so you have more leg room but i'm sitting on the seat and that is about wow that's about nine to ten inches distance between me and the front so that is a seat that is put really far forward and uh, looks pretty good okay so in terms of leg room uh, it's not bad the rear seats do recline a bit and let me just show you okay here's the reclining for the rear seat that's the lever that's the lever here lift it up okay that is the rear seat reclined okay so it's the same for left and right and we're gonna lift it up one step forward and see okay that's the rear seat more upright the difference between the two seats is this much yeah this is part of the other seat this is the left hand side seat so it's 60 40 this is in one piece okay so this is a bit straighter let's see again I'm gonna lift it down okay this is the reclining about maybe five or six degrees or ten degrees but it's a pretty good feature seat material is a bit thin but this is an entry-level car and you have some things here I like about this car is you see they they have the seat belt for the rear uh, passengers then they have a little recess here so it looks pretty neat you can put it in and even for this seat belt there's a little recess so you don't get the thing sticking out like a sore thumb and i think that's pretty good and then there's the isofix points at the bottom there are two of them in case you have two kids and you need to put two baby seats and it's quite thoughtful here they actually they actually have a little place for you to put the seat belt inside here so that when you open the seat it doesn't uh, affect the seat belt okay let's see how the seat can come out pull it up and slide the seat forward I'm trying to do it with one hand okay so this is how the things look like you can put in uh, bulky luggage by having the seat down okay so that's how the seat looks like when it's down it just sits on top of the other seat yeah let's see what it looks like with this side down okay so that's both the seats down and you are right into the boot you probably can't put a bicycle in but you can put quite a few things maybe a little shoe rack okay back into the car 
things I like about this car, very practical. Uh, for this size and price, you have adjustable seat belt anchor for the top, so it doesn't go. The seat belt doesn't strangle you. Okay, so that's good. And at the back, you have the top out hook, very convenient. And there are two of them, one on each side for passenger and driver seat. And headrest. Okay, this is the adjustable headrest you can push and go down yeah so you can adjust the headrest to your heart's desire and uh, this one is a very very good idea and this is called the anti-snatch handbag grip okay that's what i call it love but actually for you to hang your stuff the average snatch thief will find it difficult to steal your handbag so you just slide this one up press the button slide it up put your handbag in here and close it so guys if you are holding a handbag here's where you hang it right and uh, what's on this side okay this one is a USB charging port very neat because they have something on the left hand side so to make it even they put something on the right hand side so this car is actually a pretty nice car yeah so just to sum up it's got a nice engine 102 horsepower that's enough to pull this car weight now of the five versions this is the heaviest of them all and it has a uh, it's about one a little bit over one ton 15 kilos over a ton and it's got lots of space look at the back and it's even got oh my god handles one two oh my god handles oh my god <laughs> and then of course the the two at the back so now you know why the car is so popular amongst young people when they carry passengers the passengers can hang on to these levers and say oh my god oh my god but i don't understand why there's one for the driver actually they could have saved maybe 10 ringgit or 5 ringgit by not putting that one there it's totally unnecessary because i don't know of any driver who would be hanging on to that while he's driving <laughs> it's just a private joke but seriously uh, i would take away that one okay and i spend the money and put here i will put a driver's footrest okay so there is a little bit of indentation but it's not a real footrest yeah maybe it is a footrest really? yep okay so looking at the pedals well they're very standard looking pedals uh i see here a small little hump there and that's good because that is a footrest yeah it's good to have a footrest okay and there's one more feature i must show you this is a very good item doesn't cost a lot of money but this is where you put your touch and go card it's actually a toll card reader and uh, you stick it in you press the button it tells you i have 102 ringgit 97 cents and it sends through this thing here you see this thing here this is how the toll reader reads your card in that little box at the bottom so that's about it guys this is the my v 1.5 advance and let me just try to venture to say why uh, this car is so popular First of all, it has to be the right price, and with the price range of 41,000 to 52, there's an 11,000 ringgit range. You can choose uh, between five variants. Three of them are 1.3, that includes a manual, and there are two automatics. This is the highest of the range. Now, in terms of the engine, what this engine means is basically it's very reliable, and with 102 horsepower pulling a one ton car, and the others are sub one ton there is enough power yeah it has 136 newton meters of torque now with a four speed gearbox uh it's pretty standard but just remember the four speed gearbox has got these gear shift positions you can have two three d n or r so okay most important is the two three and d yeah d is it says D4 is 4th gear 
and you can use that to control your speed when you're driving uh, on mountainous roads or winding roads and that's what I did during my drive so please watch our other video and see how the car performed so the other thing that's good about this car is the interior space which we've already talked about so you talk about a car that basically looks decent it looks pretty nice uh, it's got a lot of space it's got a reliable engine and of course Perodo has got a very good network for servicing and sale and parts yeah of course sales is also important the network helps them to reach more people and the financing scheme is very simple so people are okay with it and there are even places where you can buy a car with zero down payment so there you have it guys this is the myvi one of the most successful hatches in this country and uh, watch our other video yeah we actually climbing up gunting highlands and i hope you enjoy the video and if you do enjoy our videos please do not forget to press the bell button and and subscribe and also share the video with your friends and ask them to subscribe too we need all the subscribers we can get and the more subscribers we have the better it is for us and we'll be able to continue giving you more exciting content like this thank you for watching and bye bye for now